Today we're going to have a go at making our very own paper marble run. So you're going to need some paper or some card, you might need quite a lot, a ruler, a compass, a pencil, some tape and some scissors, a piece of sturdy cardboard for your bottom, or you could tape it to a table or other piece of furniture, and some marbles to test out your run. If you don't have any marbles, you could try some other round things as well, like Maltesers, see what you can come up with. So the first thing we need to do is measure out our basic track. You're going to need quite a lot of track pieces, so you might want to measure them all out in one go, or you can measure and cut as you go through your project. So I've got some A4 card here, and I'm going to measure out three pieces of track on one piece of card. So the first thing we need to do is to mark off seven centimetres three times across our card. So I've done the top, I'm going to do the bottom. We then need to mark a space for the marble to run down the middle and space for the sides as well of our track. So we're going to measure two centimetres, then three centimetres, and there'll be two centimetres left on the other side. We're going to do that on all three tracks. So I'm going to put a mark at two centimetres, then count three centimetres and put another mark and the same on our next track. Then we need to cut them out. So we're going to be cutting out on our lines that we've drew first of all, the one that's between two of the two centimetres. Now the next important part is the folding of your tracks. So this bit in the middle is where your marble will run and these two bits make the sides. So we're going to fold those up. And then I'm going to run my pencil all the way down the side, press down so that we get a really nice strong crisp fold. Do the same on the other side. Now it's this basic track that we're going to use to make all the different parts of our marble run. So we can make straight tracks, curved tracks, hills, corkscrews and loop the loops. And I'm going to show you how to make all of these things now. To make your track curve we first need to use our scissors and make some cuts in our card. So we've got our two lines where we've got our folded sides. If we want our path to curve to the right we're going to put our cuts on the right hand side. If we wanted to turn to the left, we'd put them on the other side. I'm going to make mine turn to the right to start off with. So I'm going to cut into my cards, past that first fold and right up to that second folded line I've got here. So I've got a big bend in that and I'm going to do it a couple of times. So I've put this piece, if my marble's travelling in this direction, over the top, push it over, and I put a piece of cell tape on. Keep it in place, then put this part over the top of the next one. Another piece of cell tape, keep going all the way along. And the more you overlap the pieces, the curvier your track will be. There we are, and then we can do the same with the side, push that back up again, and piece of sellotape over the top, keep that from moving. And there we go. If we want my track to go the other way to the left, we'll do exactly the same thing. There we go, we've got a track that curves now. Now if you wanted to attach this to a straight piece of track as well, I've got another piece here, you can just slide the two pieces together, put some tape along the bottom and on the sides and then we've got an extended track. This time we're going to have a go at making a hill, we're going to start off with our straight track again, this time we're going to be putting cuts in both sides and we're just going to be going up to that first folded line. 
I'll put some on this side and the same on the other side just to that first folded line that we get to there we go now if I push that we start to get that little arch, that little bump and that's going to make our marble roll along go over the little hill and down the other side now you'd probably need a hand sticking this together There we go, there's our little hill. Now to make a jump or a ramp, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Start with our little cuts. So that first crease again. And this time we can change the position that we want it in. We can make it really, really steep. We can make it more gentle. And we'll just stick our little tabs on the side into the position we want them and that will give us our hill or ramp. If we make it steeper, then it'll be a jump. And when our marble rolls down the track, it'll jump off the other end. There we go, there we've got our ramp shape as well. Corkscrews and loop the loops are slightly more difficult to make, but they're very impressive when your marble goes down the run. Now to make a corkscrew and a loop the loop, you will probably need two pieces of track minimum. We're going to stick those together as our first step. Now, just like with our hills and our jumps, we need to put little cuts all the way down the length this time, just to that first line, but on both sides. I'll start at one end. Now I always leave a bit of straight track without any cuts at the end so we can join it onto other parts of the track. So I'm going to start a little way in. There we go. Now before you start assembling, I would suggest you get lots of little bits of cell tape ready cut out and ready to go. You're also going to need to use your either your cell tape or another plastic container. So I've got a little plastic tub here. We're going to use this to make sure we get the right shape for our loop the loop or corkscrew, depending on which one you're making. So we are going to use our cell tape or plastic tub and we're going to use that to roll our track around. That's going to start making our corkscrew or loop the loop shape. Then we can stick our little tabs round in that shape as it goes. And that's going to get a lovely, lovely circle shape. Now make sure you don't stick all the way around, otherwise your roll of cell tape will get stuck in the middle. So I haven't made a full circle. I've gone round till about here. Okay, I'm going to take my roll of cell tape out the middle. But you can see that part of the track has stayed where it is now. It's all stuck in place. Now instead of continuing around in a circle, making a full complete circle, I'm going to overlap slightly, so I'm bringing the card towards me, twisting it slightly so that it goes next to that part circle we've just made, so it joins here, and you can put a piece of sellotape across that part to keep it in place. So at the minute, if my marble was coming in this direction, it would go down the track, round the loop, I could leave it straight here, I could make it go slightly back up again, or I could keep going round and make another loop for it to go round. For a corkscrew, it's not going to be standing up sideways, it's going to be lying flat, and the marble will come in and it will roll round and round and round and round, and you can keep going and going and going with your corkscrew loops as many times as you like.
So now I've got a completed corkscrew. If it's held this way, my marble can go around the curves. Or I've got a loop the loop. If I hold it the other way around, my marble will come down this one, go around my loop, and will come up this other side. The last thing I'm going to show you how to make is a funnel. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a circle on our card and we're going to make our circle as big as we possibly can. Now the paper is 21 centimetres across so if we find the halfway point 10.5 we can measure our compass and then draw our circle as big as we possibly can. I'm going to put a little cross where my compass point was so that I know where the middle was and I'm going to cut my circle out. Now we're going to cut a line to the middle point of our circle and now our marble is going to be coming out of the middle of our funnel so we need to cut out a hole that's slightly bigger than a marble in the middle so it's got somewhere to escape from. Let's have a look. Yep, my marble is going to fit through that middle. And then to make it into a funnel shape, we're going to overlap our edges so they cross over each other and make our funnel shape like that. Now, the more you cross them over, the deeper the funnel will be. And if we only cross them over a little bit, we'll get a shallow dish shape. So it's up to you what size funnel you'd like to make. Pop some sellotape on. To hold it in place, you'll want one piece on each side. And there we go. Now to make sure you don't lose your marble and it escapes across your room, we're gonna put an end on our track so that this stops the marble from rolling. So I'm going to cut down from one end, down along our folded line slightly on each side and then fold this bit that we've just cut in on itself, press that down nice and hard. That's going to be our end. We can then fold these side parts across that back. And that gives us an end to our little marble run. So when our marble comes rolling down the track, it will stop at the bottom. Before we start to assemble our marble run, the last thing we need to make are supports to help support our marble run and stop it from falling over when the marble goes down. So I have got some rectangles of card here. They're all different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter what size you use to make your supports out of. You might even need to stick two pieces of card together to make longer supports depending on how big you make your marble run. Now, I'll do one with this size. We're going to fold this piece of card so that it is in quarters. So I'm going to fold my piece of card in half. Press down nice and hard or use your pencil to score down that fold. And then we're going to fold each side so that it meets this middle line and then we'll have our four sections. So now we've got four even sections on our card and we're going to fold this into a triangle shape. So they're going to have an overlap on two of the sides and we'll put some sellotape down this edge to keep it in place. You can then cut this so that it's the right height to support your marble run.
When we put our marble at the top of our marble run, we are giving it lots of gravitational potential energy. When we let go, it will fall. Gravity will pull it down and it will follow our track. It has the potential to move. When I let go of the marble, that potential energy will change into kinetic energy. Now we also lose some energy to friction when it's rubbing against that paper and to heat. Now there's a rule called the conservation of energy. It says that when we move our marble to the top, it has so much potential energy. Now the amount of kinetic energy, the movement energy, and the energy lost to friction cannot be more than the amount of potential energy we have just given our marble. That means it couldn't go around a loop the loop that's higher than our initial ramp. It can only get round our loop because the potential energy that it's gained from this long high stretch is greater than the energy it needs to get round this loop. It also means that if you've got lots of flat sections in your marble run, it will lose too much energy to friction and it will come to a stop. So we have to make sure that our highest point is always the start and it doesn't go above that and we don't have too many flat sections in our marble run. See how big you can make your marble run using all of the science and techniques I've shown you today.